Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate uh, an amount, uh, sales, quantity, revenue, whatever it is, uh, on a month over month basis. This is one of the um, quite common calculations that we have in a lot of data analysis projects that compare this month value with the previous month, calculate the variance and the percentage. Let's see how this is done in Power BI. There are a number of ways you can calculate month over month basis. First of all, to show you what month over month calculation looks like, uh, it's something like this, that in every, for example, period, you see the value of that period. In this case, it is sales, sales of January 2007, and this is sales of the previous month, the month before that. Or this is, for example, sales of February 2007, but this is the sales of January 2007. And then based on these, you may want to do some comparison like this, showing what is the variance and the percentage of that, you can add conditional formatting and anything like that around it as well. But the most important thing is how to do that calculation. To do the calculation, um, there are different functions in DAX. You can use the one I'm just showing you in this video is called parallel period. The way that parallel period function works is uh, really simple. It's a tabular function, uh, means it returns a table. Uh, it will be a table of dates. So normally you don't use it inside a measure directly. You use it inside a function, that function used in a measure, uh, normally a scalar function like calculate or anything like that. Uh, it gets three parameters. The first parameter dates, uh, whenever you see this S, that means a field with date field in it. Then the number of intervals and the interval, for example, the interval can be month. The number of intervals can be minus one. That means going one month back. The interval can be quarter, number of intervals two. That means two quarters after. Right. Uh, that is how you use this. Uh, so to show you an example of doing this, first you need to think about what is your date field uh, and where it is coming from. The date field should be the date field you used in the visual. For example, here, if I have a visual um, that is by the order date, in the fact internet sales, factory seller sales, I should be using the same thing in here. Now there are two types of date tables in Power BI. I have a video and blog about it. Go and check it out. If um, if you need to more, know more about that, go and check it out. And uh, the default one is a date table that Power BI automatically generates for every date field you have in uh, in your table. And that is why it brings that hierarchy beside it as well. You can disable it using some options. As I said, I'm not going to go much into the details of what is the difference of custom date table and a default table, date table. Go and check out that uh, link down in the description below to my article and video about it. So if I have the default date table, my calculation can be like this. Uh, first, the reseller sales itself is just some of the sales amount from the reseller sales table. Now the reseller sales last month can be uh, that reseller sales calculated over a period, a parallel period calculation. In the parallel period calculation, I'm using the date field. This is exactly the same date field used in my visualization, but I have a dot date at the end. That is because uh, that field represents a table because I'm using a default date table. Mm, and uh, that dot date means I'm getting the date field of that date table. And then minus one month means go one month back. So this all together shows me the sales of last month. The code can be downloaded uh, and the file can be downloaded from a uh, link down in the description below. Here is the result. You see the sales of each period and the last month, the month before that. Now, uh, what if your date table is a custom date table? If you have a custom date table, um, I have another example of this, that I have a custom date table. In my custom date table, I went and created a hierarchy. Uh, and you see that hierarchy of year, month. And then um, I have a calculation, which is internet sales, sum of internet sales, sales amount, and 
and the sales last month of that which is pretty much the same the only difference is that here I'm using the date field of my date table and uh, there's a relationship between this table and the date table and I don't need dot date at the end because this is not a date table it is just a field inside the date table your table should be marked as date table of course to get this working and here is the result as you can see it uh, the calendar year and month and the sales of every month compared to the sales of the month before that once you have these calculations then calculating the variance and uh, and the percentage is simple uh, variance can be just this minus that the current period minus last month period and then percentage would be that variance divided by the last month uh, here I have put some uh, additional conditional formatting to uh, to get it working in this way. Uh, but simply that is how you use a parallel period. The date field is important. Uh, if it is from the default date table, you add a dot date at the end of your field. If it is custom date table, you use the date field from your date table. Um, and then you choose the period. It can be positive, negative. Uh, and then you can use it. This can be done also using some other functions. For example, date add can be used for this type of things. There is a difference between these functions always. I have another video, an article explaining the difference between dates add and parallel period and also same period last year. Go and check it out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and AI.